The Golden State Warriors just had an extremely tough season with an extremely tough finish. I genuinely thought this team would be better, as many did, but they find themselves out of the picture completely after losing the 9-10 play and matchup to Sacramento. While yes, this is an older core with a 36-year-old at the center, I don't know if it's quite over for the Warriors yet. I get how this would be hard to comprehend with how this season went, but despite this, the Warriors have an offseason to decide if they still want to go for it or not. All signs are pointing to a Clay Thompson exit, which I believe could make way for another big entrance in Golden State. It's looking grim for the Warriors, but they still have a good opportunity to make a splash or two and salvage the rest of Seth's career. Today I'll be going over this Warriors season, how it ended, and the opportunity the Golden State still has. Before we get into this, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell, I would really, really appreciate it. It would help me out a ton. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. Let's start with this year. This was a very tumultuous year in the Bay, from internal playtime issues to Draymond's suspension and fighting to stay in the play-in. It was obvious this team wouldn't reach the potential many thought it had early on. Draymond's suspension was much more pivotal than many think, however, and this is the key to what makes me still believe in the Warriors' core. The Golden State Warriors with Draymond Green this season were 33-22, and while without him they were 13-14. and I discussed Draymond's impact a lot in my last video about the Warriors, but this is for everyone that wants him gone. While his suspensions are not good, obviously, having a guy who can completely transform a team for a 25-ish million a year price tag is a steal. I get some frustrations with Draymond, but this team would fall off a cliff without him, and they did. It's at the point where no one would give you what he's worth due to age and issues, making him especially worth it for the Warriors to keep. While getting younger talent is great, Seth isn't getting any younger, and age should not be the priority. Steph, Draymond, and Kaminga should be your untouchables, except for the scenario where Kaminga headlines a package for a top 10 to 15 guy. Notice how I said I think he should be untouchable otherwise. I love Kaminga's game and think he should definitely stay, but should the opportunity present itself to trade for a true superstar, I think you owe that to Seth. Otherwise, I would 100% keep the 21-year-old who is showing real star potential. Again, I understand concern about the future, but if Seth is going to be here, the attitude should be all in, not partially in. 36-year-old Steph is going to need a little more help, and I think the Warriors should be looking to make a big splash. You will have Klay Thompson coming off the books and in all likelihood something in return and a sign and trade for him. You have Andrew Wiggins who's on a solid deal that people would take and an expiring Chris Paul. The Warriors have plenty of tradable contracts, young players, and picks to make a sign and trade or normal trade happen. Now who exactly would this be? That's the question here. Due to Steph's age, you can pursue guys who are a bit older, and this to me opens the door here. My two main targets that will definitely be hitting free agency are LeBron James and Paul George. I understand wanting a younger target, but the thing with both of these guys is that you won't have to trade real assets. You could have a core of Seth Pods, Kaminga, Draymond, and LeBron or PG, and I think that would be scary. These are the only difference makers that could be had without major assets being moved. I want to talk about LeBron first, because for one this was rumored, and for two I think him and Steph on the court together would be lethal. Yes, he will be 40 in December. But I still think you're utterly insane to say you don't want him in any scenario, let alone when you have a 36-year-old superstar already. I don't even want to think about LeBron with Steph running off the ball, and if you still have Draymond anchoring that defense, this will be a true contender out west. A core four of Steph, LeBron, Draymond, and Kaminga would be crazy, and with Kaminga you'd have a young star developing throughout the aging of the other three. But this move would also preserve LeBron and Steph at least much more than their current roles of carrying do. I think you could seriously compete for the next two years with that core four, and I don't know what other option is giving you that. If there were to be an option to give you that, it's probably Paul George. As a Sixers fan, he has been heavily rumored to potentially sign with us, and while I don't want that because he's 34, this could be a time to strike for the Warriors. PG has been elite to end the season and will still provide all-star impact. The reason I don't want him is because we have our second star that we're going to have to pay, but for the Warriors who don't have that second top tier offensive guy, I think this could be a shoe in While it's not LeBron, I almost feel the same way I do about that possible addition, plus PG is 5 years younger. The last guy who could be had without a major trade is Pascal Siakam. I do think he'll stay in Indy, but should something go left, this could be another good fit in Golden State. Basically, anything but a small guard will be good for the Warriors, and even then I think a guy like a Donovan Mitchell could be better for the Warriors than some may think. There's no way they win a Donovan Mitchell bidding war, but just a thought because he could be back in rumors again. This brings us to the trade market, which I think will be active, however I don't know how many bona fide stars will be moved. I think a guy like a Mikael Bridges would be a good pickup, but I don't see how a move like this separates the Warriors in the insanely deep west. Basically, I think all around it makes the most sense for the Warriors to go for an older established star. 
and make some supplemental moves with pick assets. Should Brandon Ingram become available, I think he could be a true difference maker, but other than that, I'm not all that sure. The Warriors have a great opportunity to retool this offseason with Kaminga and Draymond making about $30 million combined. You also have another starter level guy in Brandon Pajemski making $3.5 million. To me, if the Warriors truly care about Steph, there is no excuse to not enter next season with a real squad. Not to say that this roster isn't talented and a good team with Draymond, but something clearly needs to change. It would be kind of funny if the Warriors end up trading Steph and rebuilding, but I'm not mentioning that except for this sentence because there is simply no way. Many teams are going to be looking to retool this offseason, and I think it will be very active. The Warriors have the flexibility to make things happen, and only time will tell if they will. That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell. It would help me out a ton. Comment down below your thoughts on the Warriors, their future, who they should go after. You know, they got picks, they got young players, and they got some cap flexibility. You know, obviously they don't have the cap room, but they can get off Wiggins, they can get off Chris Paul, and they're going to be getting off of Klay Thompson. So, you know, again, I think the Warriors are not done yet. You know, people wrote them off. You know, people wrote them off in 2020, obviously, after they were bad enough to get the second overall pick. You know, they have been written off before, and I think with a little bit of a retool, they could be right back in it. Will they win? You know, I, I you know, the West is just absolutely crazy, so I'm not like 100% sure on where exactly they fall, but I think they could be a good playoff team. And they, honestly, they were with Draymond, so I don't see why they can't be again. But that's going to officially wrap this one up. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.